Radish radish, commonly known as a roof rat, but also called the fruit rat, tree rat, or black rat, is believed to be native to India, but has been introduced to all continents of the world through human trade and travel. The roof rat is a medium-sized rat with relatively large ears and a tail that is longer than the length of its head and body combined. Roof rats can be many different colors, ranging from black to gray or brown. Roof rats are considered commensal rodents, meaning they live close to humans and are largely dependent on us for their survival. Like all living things, roof rats have a few basic requirements. They need food, water, and a safe place to live and raise their young. The availability of these basic requirements dictates the number of roof rats that can inhabit our community and homes. Now, the size of a roof rat population is limited by what the environment can support. This is called the carrying capacity. Each neighborhood and home has its own carrying capacity. The goal of Orange County Vector Control District is to educate the public and recruit them to assist us by identifying and eliminating any environmental conditions that will attract roof rats. Decreasing a neighborhood's carrying capacity by reducing or eliminating these basic requirements will proportionally reduce the population of rats and the possibility of reinfestation. It is unlikely we will be able to eliminate rats altogether, but there are several steps that can be taken to keep them from becoming a real problem. For the next several minutes, we will show you step-by-step step how to control rats in and around your home. Now, the order in which we take these steps is important. Rats need very little water, so normal landscape irrigation is enough to meet their needs. Now, limiting water is not an effective way to keep rats away. Food is another matter. Rats are very opportunistic, and two of the greatest rat attractions are bird seed and pet food. Neither should be left out overnight, and both should be stored in metal containers. Galvanized trash cans are excellent choices. Feeding birds without attracting rats is a challenge. Now, birds seem to enjoy kicking as much seed out of the feeder as they can. And even if the feeders are brought in at night, there may be a constant supply of fresh seed on the ground, perfect for attracting a mother rat looking for a place to raise a family. It is best not to use generic wild bird seed from the market. Now, much of the seed is filler and winds up on the ground. Use premium seed and to fill the feeders with only enough food for the day. Pet food left out at night is another invitation for rats and other wild animals. Pet food should be brought in at dusk. Now, most people are doing all they can to get rid of snails, but snails are another favorite food of rats. Many Orange County residents have opened their barbecue in the spring following a few months of cooking indoors, only to find a large pile of snail shells sitting on the grill. The tasty grease accumulated on most grills and the safe haven provided by the barbecue housing make a backyard grill a favorite stop for rats looking for a place to enjoy their escargot. Now we all enjoy fresh fruit and so do rats. If fruit is picked as it ripens, the attraction for rats will be reduced. Ripe fruit on the tree or on the ground is a surefire method for drawing rats to your yard. Partially eaten fruit is a good sign of possible rat activity and maybe the first indication you have a rat problem. Now rats are not the only animals that eat fruit, but the gnaw marks are distinctive and if the fruit is hollowed out, rats are the cause. The snouts of other fruit eaters are too big to accomplish this hollow feat. Try to keep fruit picked up. The first step in reducing rat populations was to eliminate the food source that was attracting them. Remember, rats will eat almost anything, but they usually look for a reliable source of suitable food, often some type of grain product to set up housekeeping. Eliminating these food sources is essential to the success of any rodent control program. After you have removed the food source, now you may feel your rat problems are over. Well, that may be true, but there are a few more steps to make sure it stays that way. Remember, the order we take these steps is very important. Step two involves sealing off your home. Now, this can seem to be a daunting task depending on the style and construction of your home. Any hole bigger than a quarter will allow a roof rat in. These openings can be almost anywhere, but here are some of the common locations. Rats are very agile climbers. They can easily scale almost anything, even the corner of a stucco wall. Any branch or wire should be seen as a bridge on a rat highway. Roof rats prefer to travel above the ground, so eliminating overhead bridges to your home like overhanging trees will be a big help. 
Roofs are notorious for providing access for rats. Some styles are constructed in such a way as to provide any number of access points to your home. The overlaps found where two roofs of different orientation come together often have openings just right for allowing rats to pass through. Look for light entering the dark attic by going up during the day. Examine any sources of light. Make sure nothing but light can get through the openings. Vent screens and damaged flashing are two common entry points. Any place where a pipe or a hose passes through an exterior wall, especially air conditioner hoses, should be checked for accessibility. Look for rub marks, dark stains left on the walls by oily fur of passing rats. If a possible entry point should be dusty and isn't or is clear of cobwebs, it is probably being used by rats. Either way, the hole should be filled. If you want to make sure the hole is being used, block the passage with a loose wad of aluminum foil. Now, if the passage is being used, the foil will be displaced. Remember, if you can stick your thumb in the hole, you should probably fill it. Check out the crawl spaces, doors, and vents. Rats love to get inside this way. Repairing these rat highways and entry points is not terribly expensive or difficult. Finding them all will be the challenge. Again, look for rub marks. Rats can easily climb stucco walls, so be on the lookout for rub marks in the corners. Droppings are another good indication of where rats are spending their time. Damaged or lifted flashing and vent screens should be replaced or repaired with suitable materials. The quarter size holes can be filled quite effectively with coarse steel wool. Bronze wool is better if you can find it. They don't rust, rats cannot gnaw through them, and they are ideal for packing into small, irregular shaped openings. Look at marine supply stores. Some openings are more challenging to repair than others. You may have to be creative. Now, once you have sealed off your home, you need to make sure you haven't blocked the escape of any remaining rats. When all the rats are gone, it is time for step three, removing the material where rats make their homes. Now we call this harborage. If you want to try step three before completing step two, guess where the rats will go first to look for a new home? Many plants make excellent rat harborage. Untrimmed palms, yuccas, and Italian cypress are favorites. Dense growing vines like ivy and bougainvillea provide excellent harborage. In fact, any heavy shrubbery will provide rats ideal cover. If your landscaping is too dense for you to see through, it is too dense for predators to see into. Rats can establish a nest and feel safe. Rats will also seek piles of firewood or lumber, storage sheds that are not visited very often, even pool and spa heaters that are not being used provide harborage. Make sure sheds, water heater closets, and any other outdoor structures have properly sealing doors. The harborage provided by heavy vegetation or storage shed combined with attractive food sources will almost guarantee a rat problem. Evaluate your yard for suitable shelter, thin vegetation, restack wood, clean out storage areas. What you are doing is making your yard unattractive to rats. If you accomplish this, the rat problem will almost certainly go away. In the event you still have rats, the Orange County Vector Control District can help with stragglers. We use poison bait in a tamper and pet resistant tube. These tubes are carefully placed in locations where they are secure and out of reach by pets and young children. Rat traps must be set safely and effectively. Traps can be baited with a mixture of peanut butter and oatmeal. If you have a rat that is adept at removing the bait without getting caught, use a little steel wool with peanut butter as bait the steel wool cannot be removed easily. Now, if pets and birds are a concern, invert a plastic laundry basket over the set trap. Rats have access, but the other animals will not be subject to harm. The district website can also provide instruction on the proper and safe use of snap traps. Remember, bait and traps are only aids. If you have not taken the other steps, nothing our inspectors do will make a difference. In fact, it is a district policy not to place a bait tube until the first three steps have been completed by the homeowner. Working together, we can keep roof rats from becoming a serious problem in Orange County.